This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Jack Threads. Shannon, before we check port 110, I just wanted to mention I was, I was watching your segment there and I noticed that uh, over on DistroWatch, oh, what's this? Ubuntu has actually dropped 2,098 HPD <gasps> points and Mint is now in the lead. Wow. Yeah, right above Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, That's amazing. OpenSUSE. I mean, it's, there's a good point there, you know, like you can't fight progress. Obviously, things are going to improve and yeah. it may not be what you want it to be, but there's alternatives and that's the beautiful thing about yeah. Linux is you don't have to run GNOME or Unity. There's Fluxbox, there's KDE, there's roll your own. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe that one's not as easy of an option. I'm actually thinking about moving to Arch. I'm getting a little tired of... Uh, Arch? Arch Linux seems like it might be out. the one for me because I'm, I'm getting a little tired of window managers <laughs> altogether. The more, going, uh. Seriously, the more that I use these, the more I'm like, I don't even <laughs> want a window manager. <laughs> anyway, oh. yeah, just flip to the Fluxbox and stay on Debian. App to get install. Fun. Aww. All right. Let's check Do you check want me to go to the emails? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the first one is from AAA. He or she writes, what hypervisor do you use when you run Backtrack in a virtual machine? I'm trying to use VMware server on a Windows 7 host and not liking how the USB alpha Wi-Fi card is virtualized. It's sometimes flaky. Ooh. Yeah, um, so USB virtualization in either VirtualBox or VMware is mm -hmm. kind of just a pain in the ass. And honestly, I don't see a reason why, like, with all of the major distros now having really easy ways to boot off of USB, there's no reason why you shouldn't just run it on the bare metal because you're going to get so much better performance, especially with Backtrack uh, 5, the latest version. You're, you're going to see, uh, it's just going to be way better of an experience if you're running it on the bare metal because the kinds of things that you're wanting to do with a hacker OS are the things where the hacker OS needs your hardware. Yeah. So <laughs> while, yes, there's a VMDK, of uh, Backtrack 5 um, that you can just download from backtracklinux.org and you can, you can do the pass through. I agree, it is flaky sometimes mm -hmm. with, you know, I mean, even that being my favorite USB Wi-Fi uh, adapter, we have it in the store, it's, it's great, except, you know, your mileage may vary and there's no reason why you can't just dual boot off of it or just boot off a of USB or a micro okay. SD card. Yeah. Cool. All right, this next one is kind of a roundup, not so much a question, okay. so interrupt me if you have any comments. Well, because we posed the question to the audience last week. Yes, we did. Oh, let me log back in here. I oh, need to stop that. What's your password? Shh. All right, <laughs> this next roundup is, uh, starts off with Chris from datarescuelabs.com. He wrote in about our recent question of recovering data in EXT partitions. He suggests test disk. It should recover most common partitions. If that fails, carving tools such as Scalpel could work or a Windows tool, file sig called Simple Carver, but it's not free. Access Data FTK could do this as well or even X-Way Forensics tool. Uh, Chris owns a small data recovery company and is CCE certified, so I'd say there are good places to start as well. The next one is Paul Alexander, ASZLIG, <laughs> Telinit5, Ed, and a ton others also highly recommended the test is suite of tools from uh, cgsecurity.org. It's licensed, licensed under the LGPL as well. Woohoo! Open yeah. source is fun. Yay. Yay! And finally, the last one is PVR2002. He links the Ubuntu wiki for a list of free recovery tools. We'll have all the mentioned links in our show notes at hack5.org. Nice. We also got another very interesting email from Patrick. Remember where we were talking about how uh, you wanted to remove your credit card number from yes. Xbox Live? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Patrick writes in, uh, catching up on some older shows and listening to Snubs talking about her credit card gone from the XBL or the Xbox Live market, whatever it is, and XBL, not yeah. being able to put it all zeros. Well, he says this depends on whether they're actually doing initial uh, val uh, verification on your credit card. Uh, right. But if they... Um, if they're just checking that it's a valid number. And he says that you should read up on this interesting thing called Mod 10. It's actually the Loon algorithm, or sometimes known as Module 10. It's basically a very simple checksum algorithm that's used to um, check whether credit card numbers, it's used by uh, like social security numbers in U the US and Canada, yeah. it's used for IMEI numbers. It's basically a very simple and quick sanity check to see whether a number conforms to a specification. Okay. And he points out that uh, the, the number four 
one one one. It's Visa, isn't it? Yeah, the, the Visa. I'm gonna give you a Visa credit card number. You ready? Four one one one, one 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 one, one 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 one, one 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 one. Passes. I'm it, on. I get it this. passes the Mod Ten check, and you know he says that Mastercard because Mastercard is five, I believe. He, he, exactly. This is he, he Amex goes is to point seven. out that. Um, that if yeah, and the thing about Amex is it's seven, but it's like one digit less yes. than the rest of them. Yeah. And uh, who is six? Is it Mastercard? Anyway. Discover. Discover. See, you know this because you used to work yeah. in a bank. Yeah, that's how I always knew if they were uh, banking with us because the first like six digits mm -hmm. were for our it's, specific yeah, bank. Yeah, the first digit is is it a Visa? Is it a Mastercard? Whatever. And then as you go down the digits, it goes like. I want to say region and then bank. I once yeah, it's something like it. Yeah. ours was like four two zero 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 or something like that, and four, that four, meant nine, it was four four nine five. Yeah, nine thousand. Four four nine five. Four four nine five nine zero zero zero. Yeah, because I still have credit cards with them. I'm not going to give you yes. the rest of the digits, but anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, he says that unless they're using like the method of actually uh, pre-authorizing it by like taking a dollar taking out a and dollar then putting and a dollar then back, back in, in. Yeah. yeah, then. Um, in most cases, you should be able to get away with just filling it in with all of that data. And yeah, he goes on to talk about MasterCard being a five, Discover being a six, Amex mm. being a seven, nine being reserved for like gas cards and right. gift cards yeah. and, and things of that nature. But uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. I, I, as I was reading it, it occurred to me that, oh, wait a second. You could just go and get one of those prepaid Visa cards that you find at least here in the States you at convenience stores. You mentioned that to me, yeah. And just use one of those. About it. Use the numbers off of that. I have a friend that also told me that I could try a prepaid card. So, yeah, I have options. Yeah. I also, mean, my card is expiring January. Oh, well, then there you <laughs> go. Problem might just be solved. Problem solved. Yes. <laughs> Let's move on to Jason's question. All right. Jason said in episode, episode 910, Shannon recommended FastSum for calculating MD5 checksums in Windows. However, I'd like to recommend HashTab, a free program for Windows, also available for Mac. Once it's installed, when you right click a file and then select properties, there will now be a file hashes tab included, which calculates numerous types of checksums and hashes. It can even compare files easily from within the same tab. It is available at the following address, and we'll put that in the show notes. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's nice. Yeah. Well, or, like, or you can also just Google hashtag. Yay. We like cool little tools like that. We do. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned because we'll be back with uh, your Technolist photo and trivia question after a quick yes, break. Trivia. If you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but you hate wasting cash, get this. You could score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day at Jack Threads, the invite-only shopping club for guys. They're serving up street, skate, and surfwear brands at brain-melting prices. Best of all, Hack 5's hooking you up. That's right, skip the wait list and join free at jackthreads.com slash H-A-K-5 to start saving instantly without having to leave the house. It's time for the Technolust Photo of the Week. Got a really creative one this week from we Andrew, do. right? Yes, this one is from Andrew. It is a, a bunch of Pentium processors built into the shape of Hack 5. He had like 50 of them just kind of laying around. That's and so cool. He figured, eh, why not take a picture of it? You That's know, cool. you know, you've made it when somebody does your logo in Pentium processor. I mean, isn't that how the old <laughs> adage yeah, goes? Yeah, duh. Yes, <laughs> of course. It's all about the Pentiums, and uh, and if you guys are yeah. using Pentium processors for anything odd, you can send those over to feedback at hack5.org, or just pictures of you wearing your swag or whatnot. Or wearing the Pentiums. I'm just or saying. Or wearing the Pentiums. Yeah. <laughs> we could we could take all the recycled hardware that we're gonna make a triceratops out of, and we could like. You know, then I could then I could like take all of the antennas and it could mount them to me. I could be like, I am the cutest of Borg. Oh God. I'm sorry. All right, trivia. Trivia. This week's trivia or last week's trivia was I keep on doing that. <laughs> last week's trivia question was this term is generally used to describe the novel works of William Gibson, Bruce Sterling, Pat Cadigan, and plenty others. Can I can I can I answer this one? Yes. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Can I can I buy Cyberpunk for five thousand? Jim, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, that was an easy one. I'll give yeah. you 50 bucks for yeah. it. <laughs> nah, make that like a dollar. Okay. <laughs> this week's question is, what one person or thing has made it to every single DEF CON since day one? I know this one. You I do? Know, because it also 
bonus if you can tell me what other cons it has visited. Oh, oh, on... extra bonus yeah. if you have taken a picture of it. Yeah, because don't we have a picture of you at ShmooCon with it? I think so. Maybe. Anyway, answer at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some Shannon's awesome Hack 5 swag. Darn right. Yes. And Darn tootin'. Remember to subscribe to us. We have a new page set up, hack5.org slash follow. It has all the great places where you can find us on the social networks and all that other good stuff. And you can get all of your favorite Hack 5 goodies at the Hack Shop, hackshop.com, like the brand new Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark III. And huh? we also have... These uh, these are good for LARPing, because you can be right. all like, plus two damage, plus two damage, plus two damage, huh? Ah! Yeah, and, and they're also good for getting Wi-Fi signals like across a very uh, long and effective uh, of course. range. I may or may not be using one so that I can stream STTNG and STVOI and STDS9 at home. So anyway, just throwing that out there. Because I, I still need to, I called Comcast and, the, and they won't hook it up because I got RG59. And so I'm going to have to go DSL, but until then. Anyway, yes, fun stuff. Hack tips, <laughs> they're on Fridays and they're lots of fun. Tune in. They're good times. Yeah. And guys, until next week, remember to trust your Technolest. Bye bye. Let's go get some beers. Plus two. Pick a basement and it go. You wanna know? Draw your life into a world. It's on a little tack P and then 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 Pineapple Mark III is in the house. Arr, ow, built in man in the middle attacks, poison DNS, or just eavesdrop on connects. Yeah. We're, st we're still your health with magic. Bonk you on the head plus plus. No!